Welcome to the Virtual Flight Academy. My name is Micah Messer, and I am not a real-world instructor. However, I do hold a private pilot certificate. The goal of this video, and others like it, is to introduce you to real-world procedures, and also bring real-world procedures into the virtual flight world. Whether you're a veteran virtual pilot or a new virtual pilot, this series should be beneficial to your learning experience. Before we begin, understand you should not use any of the techniques I'm about to teach you in the real world. My instruction, however, based on real world procedures, is to be used only in the virtual world. I am not a registered certified flight instructor and cannot teach you procedures for the real world as required by the FAA. Lastly, some procedures will vary and or be abbreviated from real world procedures as necessary for the virtual flight world. Also, techniques I teach you may not be the same as others uh, or what you may have learned in real life. There are variations to certain techniques to achieve certain goals while flying. Anyway, let's get up into the sky. Welcome aboard. Today we'll be in the Cessna 152 provided by Microsoft. Our objectives today are pre-flight and engine start. The goal here is to know what you need to do prior to starting the engine, like fuel, weight, balance, etc. And then onto starting the engine properly. In the description of this video, you'll find links to a checklist for the Cessna 152 that has been created off a real checklist provided by Cessna. It was modified to fit the virtual world. Attached, you will also find a pilot operating handbook for the Cessna 152 that I may reference occasionally. Let's start with our pre-flight inspection. To start a pre-flight inspection, the first thing we'll do is we'll want to make sure the ignition switch is in the off position. I'm going to toggle this yoke so I can see underneath. We'll make sure this is in the off position, which we do see right here. So that's good. We'll check that on our checklist. Next, we'll turn on our master switches. These are these two red switches right here. Both come on, and we'll see that we have our avionics turn on, our OBIs turn on, and our fuel gauges turn on as well. I we want to check our fuel quantity. Right now, it looks like we have half a tank in both tanks, which should be fine for what we're planning to do here. Next, we'll want to make sure our fuel shutoff valve is in the on position. We look down here, we'll see that we have that sitting between our two seats. I want to flip it to the on position as indicated here. Then we'll turn our master switch back off. Next in our pre-flight inspection, we're going to check our freedom of movement along our ailerons, elevator, rudders, and engine controls. Now this is going to be done virtually to make sure that all of our bindings are correct. We're going to make sure that our yoke is correctly set up and that our throttle quadrant is also correctly set up. Depending on what you're using, this will vary slightly. So we'll start off by checking our ailerons. On the left side, what we're going to look at is when we go to the left, we should see the aileron go up. And when we turn to the right, the aileron go down. When we look at our right wing, it is going to be the reverse. When we turn to the left, we'll want to see it go down. And when we turn to the right, we'll want to see it go up. So both our, our ailerons are free and correct. Next, we'll check our elevator. Thankfully, in the Cessna 152, we have this large window in the back. We're going to just turn around and look at it. When we go up, we should see the elevator also go up. When we go down, we should see the elevator go down. And with the rudder, we should see when we go left, it go left. And when we go right, it goes right. So our ailerons, elevator, and rudder controls are all free and correct. Next, we'll want to check our engine controls. Depending on the throttle quadrant you're using or whatever you're using for your throttle, this will vary slightly. For me, I'm using a Honeycomb Bravo throttle quadrant, really nice throttle quadrant. 
But what I'm going to do is make sure that our axes are correctly set. Throttle, I want to make sure when I go full in, it goes full in. When I come all the way back out, it comes all the way back out. Make sure when I go full in, it goes full in. When I come all the way out, it comes all the way out. We're going to check our flaps, even though we're off, which means they will not articulate because the Cessna 152 has electronic flaps. I want to make sure it indicates as it does appropriately. Cool. That's what we want to see prior to actually moving on. We'll continue on our checklist to the before starting engine section. We have completed our pre-flight inspection. Now you might be wondering, that was a very short pre-flight inspection. And the answer to that is, yes, it was. Because in the real life, we would spend approximately 15 to 20 minutes on the outside of the aircraft, checking fuel levels, making sure there's no buckling in the airframe, checking the brakes, disc, disc brakes uh, levels, we'd be checking the tire pressure, oil uh, levels, uh, how dirty the oil is, we're checking the propeller for any dents, scratches, etc. Because this is a virtual world, none of that is modeled. So there is no need to go that deep into the pre-flight inspection. So if you're a real world pilot and you're watching this going, you skipped a lot of steps. Well, yes, I did, because you can't actually check these things. Just like the pitot tube. I can't check the pitot tube to see if it's stopped up. Uh, I can look at it, but it'll never actually be stopped up here in the game. It may get iced over when you get to a certain level, but it'll never actually be stopped up on the ground. All right, so we've completed our pre-flight inspection. We're going to set our virtual seating position. For me, I like just about right here. I set a preset, uh, which you can do, of course, in the menus as well for how you want to sit inside your cockpit. Next, I want to make sure I did, in fact, turn our fuel shutoff valve to on, which I did. Then I'll want to actually turn our radio and electrical equipment off. Now you're wondering, well, it's already off. We turned the master switch off. It's all off. Why do we, what do you mean turn it off? If we actually look at our electrical or radios, any type of navigational, you'll notice that there are off buttons on the actual radios themselves. For these COM1 and COM2, you'll notice we actually have a little dial here and it has a little off position. So we actually want to turn this all the way to the off position. We also want to make sure our transponder is in the off position. This is the only electrical things here, or avionics, so to speak, radios, communications, here inside of the SS-152. So now that we've done that, we can move on to the next step, checking our brakes. Now, we're not actually checking them as we're taxing, which we will do later. What we're actually doing is making sure, again, that our controls are set appropriately. So if I release the parking brake, what I want to make sure is that my left toe brake activates my left toe brake. Right toe brake is my right toe brake. Left and right is appropriate as we've already checked. So we can see if both go in, both come out. That's what we want to see. Then I'll turn the parking brake back on. Circuit breakers check in. Again, this is not really modeled here in the 152. You can see the circuit breakers, but they're never going to actually pop out. We'll move on to starting the engine. It's really simple to start an engine here in the 152. What we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and enrich in the mixture. Do full rich. Harper air heat we want in the cold position, which it already is. This would be the hot position. Keep it in the cold position. Master switch to on. And this is why we want to turn our avionics off. We cannot start our engine with radios and avionics on. You might actually surge the system and damage those systems. Since this is the first time we've actually flown it today, we'll need to prime the aircraft. To prime the aircraft, we'll actually turn, we'll pump the primer between one to three times. We're going to pump it two times. Generally, it's very successful for me. Then we'll add throttle approximately half an inch in, which is about right there. We'll make sure our propeller area is clear. Of course, in the virtual world, this propeller cannot hurt anybody. But in the real world, it's very important to make sure the propeller area is clear. You don't have a tow bar connected. 
I'm saying that because I we had something happen in my flight school where someone actually uh, turned the engine on tope still uh, attached and it obviously messed up the propeller. So make sure it's clear and then we would yell out clear. That's to let everyone know around us we're about to start our engine. Next, we'll actually start the engine. So if you look down here to our ignition switch, we'll want to turn this to the start position. So it'll go right, left, both, and then start. Hold for about two to three seconds till the engine starts, then back to both. We want to check our oil pressure. We want to make sure it's not below the red or above the red. And we're sitting here right at the edge of the green. That's a good position to be at. Check our RPMs. Anywhere between 800 to 1,000 RPMs is a good starting position for your uh, RPMs. So we'll leave it as is right here at just about 1,000. Last thing we want to do here is want to turn on our beacon. Turn on our beacon is simply this switch right here. We'll switch it to the on position. Next, we could go ahead and turn our avionics back on. So we'll go back to the radio systems here and turn these on by just turning the volume up. I'm using my mouse wheel to do it. And then we'll want to turn our transponder to on as well. And that's it. We have now officially pre-flighted and started the aircraft. Next, what we will do, we'll do a pre-taxi checklist and then we'll taxi We'll take off and we'll show you guys the pattern. That all will be in another episode of the Virtual Flight Academy. Of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below or head on to the Discord, which the link is down in the description, and ask them in the help chat there. Me or one of our mentors will get with you and try to help you as best as we can. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you guys are interested in a little bit more in detail depth of what all these instruments are, how they work, and different aspects of actually flying, I am going to be working on a ground virtual academy that will be really be releasing to my patrons only. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll uh, be sure to add that to the list of videos to do. Anyway, I hope I have informed you in some way and i look forward to episode two which will be releasing in about a week thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys next time up in the sky